We're talking in this module about a concept that's in chapter four, and that's the concept of public goods. Public goods have a couple of characteristics. The first one is non-rivalry. And non-rivalry here means that more than one person can consume a particular good at a time. The second characteristic is non-excludability. And that means that you, anybody, can't exclude a person who doesn't pay for the good from consuming some of the benefits of those goods. Let me give you an example, silly one, but an example nonetheless. Okay, we're gonna go here. Let's imagine we have a neighborhood, okay? Here's a house. My artistic ability leaves something to be desired. Here's one. And right in the center here is an old house that's kind of falling down into ruins. Here's a street. Here's another street. And there are houses on both sides of this house that's kind of been deserted and abandoned. Now, this house here is kind of an eyesore. Um, the people in the community are a little worried about their kids getting into it. The grass is high, the weeds are high, the roof leaks. It's a little dangerous. And the people in the community, knowing this, kind of go to the city and ask if it's possible maybe if they can take over that spot and turn it into maybe a pocket park for the community. <clears throat> they do. The city says yes. And everybody kind of gets together, forms committees and all that, raise some money, do the work. and develop a set of plans in order to take that and turn it into a real benefit and asset for the area. Everybody, that is, except for the person who lives down here, who we shall call Mr. X. Mr. X is the kind of grouch who kind of lives in a lot of neighborhoods. He doesn't say hi to you when you go and get the mail. He yells at the kids when they ride their bikes up and down the streets and, and that sort of thing. The community works for a year and they raise the money. They raise the house and take away all the trash and cart away all of the, the remnants. They plow and they mulch and they put swing sets in and they plant trees and they plant flowers and it's beautiful. It takes a year. And all the folks in the community have worked except for Mr. X. Now the community gets a lot of benefits from doing this. Their property values go up. It looks really lovely and families can enjoy it. It's much prettier and much less dangerous than that sort of dismantled house that was sitting there to begin with. Everybody enjoys these benefits, and here's the point, even Mr. X. You can't exclude him, non-excludability was one of our characteristics here, you can't exclude him from those benefits. His property values are gonna go up just like everyone else's are. He enjoys the benefits of looking at the park, right? along with everyone else. He can look at the park and enjoy it, just like everyone else can at the same time. This is that non-rivalry characteristic we were talking about a little bit ago. Mr. X, in this particular case, is what we call a free rider. He's a free rider in this. He's enjoying the benefits of the production of this good without paying any of the cost. He can enjoy it along with everyone else, and you can't exclude him from those benefits. That's what makes this a public good. And that's part of the reason that goods that are public goods are generally produced by the government. They're paid for by our taxes. They're produced by the government so that everybody has in some way a uh, stake in them. We've paid for them, and everybody helps to produce them through the government. Parks are a good example of, in my continuum up here, a public good, as are things like national defense. Private goods, by contrast, have rivalry of consumption and excludability. Cornflakes are the example I've got up here as a private good. I can exclude you from eating cornflakes if I buy them for myself, and I can exclude you from all the benefits, and if I eat them, you can't. So, private goods and public goods, with goods that share some characteristics of both in the middle, called by our textbook anyway, as quasi-public goods. So, Public Goods, Chapter 4 in McConnell.